it's going to explode. That's right. Happy Wednesday, everybody. You look fantastic, as do I. <laughs> so let's talk about Stanford. Some call it a college, although now it appears to be little more than a daycare center for brain-dead gas bags. <laughs> It kicked off last week when the Fifth Circuit Judge Kyle Duncan was invited, remember that word, invited, by the Stanford Law School Federalist Society to give a speech. But when he started, this happened. So you've invited me to speak here, and I'm being heckled nonstop. And I'm just asking for an administrator to sign. Oh, you know, keep in mind, these aren't kindergartners with poopy pants. These are Stanford law students with poopy pants. But their dean is worse. A giant sack of poopy pants, if you will. I'm uncomfortable because this event is tearing at the fabric of this community that I care about and I'm here to support. I have to ask myself, and I'm not a cynic to ask this, is the juice worth the squeeze? And it's uncomfortable to say this to you as a person. It's uncomfortable to say that for many people here, your work has caused harm. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thank you. I'll take it. So. She's the victim, or at least playing one, because that's her job after all. She's Tyrion Steinbeck, Stanford's associate dean for, you guessed it, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Although it should really be diversity, inclusion, and equity, because that would be D-I-E, which is what she wants all successful people to do, <laughs> die. Because <laughs> it's all about equity. The idea that no matter how hard you work and how talented you are, you won't and should not get ahead of anyone else. The left is always changing words because we used to call that communism. <laughs> to Stanford's credit, the president and law school dean then apologized to the judge for what the judge had called deeply uncivil behavior by bullies. So guess what happened next? The same students who harassed the judge are now harassing the administrators. They're protesting apologies now. Lucky for me, I never say I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do, though. When Stanford Dean Jenny Martinez left the classroom after a lecture, she found hundreds of students lining the hallway, dressed all in black and wearing masks that said, counter speech is free speech. So what is counter speech? It's the heckling that drowns out free speech. So their concept of free speech is that no opposing side ever gets to talk. I thought you had to be married for that. <laughs> but it's like I always say, if somebody calls you a bully, just intimidate him till they shut the f up. <laughs> anyway, as for Steinbeck, the diversity cop, she's likely too dumb for anything else. But the thing is, she's still got that job, so she's safe. That's the hilarity of the woke industrial complex. It doesn't teach you anything but how to complain about people who are trying to succeed. And no one wants that person in the workplace. So you need to find a job just like Steinbach's to survive. Because while students fail in real life, the dean of outrage still makes a pretty penny. Meanwhile, elsewhere in California, Antifa rioted at UC Davis because a conservative, Charlie Kirk, was speaking. That's a lot of woes. <laughs> of course, the faculty stood with the anti-speech freaks. Here's the UC Davis chancellor. UC Davis stands with our transgender and non-binary Aggies <laughs> in opposition to this hateful and divisive messaging. Aw, oh, how's this for a divisive message? You're a douche. <laughs> but, but he's also scared. He's scared of losing his job, so he has to parrot the mob. But once again, we see the ludicrous contradictions, right? Leftists believe speech that makes them uncomfortable is violence. But that the literal violence that they unleash in response that's free speech. So why do these students go to college anyway? Why go there in the first place? You think they want to succeed in life, but no. No one achieves success as a victim. 
And that fa failure just makes them angrier, which feeds into their victimhood. It's a self-perpetuating loop of defeat. It's like they want to turn out like Brian Kilmeade. <laughs> and he's not even here. Rest in peace. I'm kidding, he's alive. God, don't die during the show, Brian. <laughs> But we're seeing this prescription for failure throughout society. This D-I-E-B-S creates the appearance of progress without actually paying attention to customer needs. They'll say, hey, look at our wokeness score. Never mind that this is a bank and we're collapsing. <laughs> and that becomes an incentive for weak minds. I mean, you could do a good job, a really good job, and maybe no one notices. Or you could display your wokeness and get recognized without having to work at all. It gets worse. If a recruiter has to choose between a competent white dude and the only diversity choice left because that pool has already been drained, she's gonna hire the diversity leftovers to meet their quota. So companies decline, while those who embrace equity over competence manage to hold on to their job, just like that dean of equity. But it's everywhere now, even finance. Silicon Valley Bank probably didn't collapse because of wokeism. But how does wokeism make anybody want to put their money in your bank? How does any of this stuff make anybody more trustworthy? Back in the day, if you opened an account at a bank, they gave you a free toaster. Now it's a lecture on pronouns. The most common pronouns that folks are familiar with are she and he. Probably you have clients that use they, them as pronouns. Um, they're gender neutral pronouns on purpose. We talked about folks that are non-binary that intentionally don't identify as male or female. So some of those folks use they, them as their pronouns. Z is another gender neutral pronoun. Um, and the other part of that would be here, spelled H-I-R. That was Signature Bank, currently in a lot of trouble. So the bad news is, hey, you may lose your house. The good news, when the movers come, you can call them by the appropriate pronoun. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She knows security like I know immaturity. Former Deputy National Security Advisor, KG McFarlane. As a British conservative, he feels conflicted about driving on the left. Best-selling author and Fox News contributor, Douglas Murray. He's exactly what we look for in a guest, available on short notice. <laughs> Fox News contributor Tom Shalhoub! <laughs> and she's like a spider, small, lanky, and people scream when they find her in their bathtub. Fox News contributor Cat Tip! <laughs> Douglas, always a pleasure to have you back on this show. And I'm not paid to say that. Although I should be. But there's going to be a but. <laughs> yes, yes. There's always a but with me, and it's usually firm. <laughs> you know, um, would you ever hire one of these people as a lawyer? Could you imagine them actually trying to argue a case in court? No, it's, it's terrifying. I mean, uh, these, these uh, most people think of Stanford as like the third best law school roughly in America. So yeah. Th th these students are going to go on to serious careers, or should have gone on to serious careers. I mean, I think they should all frankly, be chucked out of the university. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should be fired. They shouldn't be able to work, certainly not in the law, because they're just not going to be able to represent any clients. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a horrible shock for them when they discover w what crime is. Yes. Um, uh, that, real that, crime. The real crime. Yes. I, I mean, and not just hurty words, yeah. but, you know, uh, murder, stabbing, rape, all these sorts of things. They're going to have to be a courtroom prosecuting or defending. And uh, I just don't think we want a generation of American lawyers that runs out of the courtroom for a safe space. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, uh, I, but there's one other thing, which is that this apology just isn't enough. Mm -hmm. I still can't get over the sheer joy of the fact that the diversity, inclusion, and equity officer is called Steinbach. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, great. it's great. I'm fairly sure there's a backstory there somewhere <laughs> yes. of something that somebody could call oppression. Yeah. But, but, but Ms. Steinbach has got such a great grift going on here. However, it should stop. And if Stanford is serious about all of this, fire her tomorrow. The idea this woman had the audacity to speak over a judge and pretend that she knew more. Go, fire her. S save the salary. Yeah. Also, <laughs> she knew, she, it was planned. She had a speech ready. She was, she was, she was swooping down to steal the moment, right? That was, yeah. you know, this is, I, I, 
I read somewhere, KT, that like Stanford has the like just the more inclusivity like uh, consultants than any other school because they have so many woke students. <laughs> None of them. These are lawyers. Understand the First Amendment. That's kind of scary because in 20 years, they're going to be like, I don't know. Well, I guess they'll be waiting on me. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be my little handlers. <laughs> they'll carry me in a box. <laughs> yeah. They'll have to change me, KT. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'll, even if I'm healthy. <laughs> you know what really excites me? What? Okay. Have you heard of chat, um, you know, GBT, yes. artificial intelligence, how people in certain jobs are going to be replaced by computers? It's a kind of scary thought, isn't it? Yes. But guess who's the number one profession that's going to be replaced by computers? Mm -hmm. Lawyers! These people aren't going to be able to pass their any of the bar exams. But you know what? But the they'll get rid of the bar exam, won't well, they? Of course, it's absolutely. It's but, racist. But, but the second profession that's going to go mm -hmm. is teachers, yeah. professors. So I'm just thrilled with this. Keep talking, you idiots, because you know, <laughs> it's, enjoy it while you've got it. You know, we had this discussion. If we can, like, if I can, like, online become a notary, you could become a lawyer online. Oh, you could become a priest online. Oh, I have. Become, you can marry I've met a few. <laughs> Speaking of priests, Tom, uh, <laughs> don't you think it's time? <coughs> to create a whole new kind of university system. I know there's a, the University of Austin is, is uh, kind of openly challenging this kind of orthodoxy. But uh, you're, you've got young daughters, right? And, That's right. I mean, you have to start thinking about this. Tom's University, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah, you're <laughs> dressed right. like Jaloo a. Jalou you. Yeah, exactly. Jalou you. You're right. I need a. I need you're a like, and you look like a, what do you call it? A yell leader. Not a cheerleader, <laughs> but a yell leader. Well, look. Do you know what I mean? Cricket yeah, captain. A cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to the origins of this because I wanted to know why, why was this judge so controversial? I was, I, it's amazing. He, was he some kind of shock jock or something? Yeah. No, it's just that he had a case in front of him. It was a guy named Norman, and he got caught with child porn, mm -hmm. and he had to go to prison. And then he wanted to go back, and he asked the judge because the, this guy Norman turned into Catherine. Yes. And he said, you need to go back, and you need to change the arrest warrant to Catherine. Mm -hmm. he, and the judge was like, no, it was definitely Norman who did that. Yes. <laughs> that was his controversy. Exactly, exactly. He caught the grift. Yeah. He was like, the guy was changing his gender so he could get, you know, and then he could say, no, I'm a woman, and I'd go to the women's prison. The and then that was his sin. Yes. Although, if you are, if you're going to change to Catherine, wouldn't you want Norman to still be the guilty one? Yeah. It's like instead, yeah. she's like, no, no. That was Norman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. It's almost like as if like People Norman Bates was able to convince the judge that his mother really killed Janet Lee. <laughs> That's oh, funny. I never saw that movie. <laughs> That's oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> I brought, I've had plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So should we call you Norman here? Oh, good one. Yeah, um. thank you. Uh, would you, you know, you saw what happened to Charlie Kirk there at UC Davis. Do you think that would happen to you? Like, do you ever think about that when you're going to speak at a, at a college? That... I mean, that ha did happen to me. What are you talking about? In 2016, oh, well. somebody came up to me and whipped water in my face and dumped a whole water bottle on my head. Oh. But it, oh. uh, and I've never had any child porn. You know, until you've had somebody protest you on a college campus, yeah. you really haven't arrived. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you haven't been there. So good for you. I'm thrilled. Been there before. Even... Joe, you know, Pat. This is why I carry around my own glass of acid. Yeah. So if somebody douses water on me, I throw acid on them, and then I can't get arrested. Because yeah, they'll I go, I thought it was acid, so I had acid with me. Yeah, I forgot, my, I forgot mine on the kitchen table. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm this... not sure there's any law that protects you on that yeah. one, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Norman. Yeah. Well, I think that there's something impressive a little bit here, because... I thought, you know, that nobody could ever do as good of a job at devaluing a college education as the government is doing. Yeah. <laughs> but these kids are doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, as you mentioned, Douglas, you know, to do lawyering, a large, the only part of that is being in the room with somebody with, the, with whom you disagree. That's the only thing that mm -hmm. you have to do. And if you can't do that, you can't be a lawyer, but also you can't really do anything. Mm. You know, I mean, if, if you can't be in within, you know, I don't know, like 8,000 acres of someone who you disagree with without having a total meltdown, I mean, I couldn't have survived when I was working as a Boston market cashier. 
It's, it's it's not that you can't be a lawyer. You can't go anywhere. You can't move in a neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, but even then, nobody's watching them either. Yeah. All right. KT, going I'm after MSA. Tonight. You're here a monster tonight. <laughs> yeah, you and me in purple. We're gonna yeah. paint the town purple tonight. <laughs> yep. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.